we're taking the Corn Marrow out for a drive and we're going to go visit the Smoke Monster Nova. Stick around. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage. I'm just getting strapped in here because I'm getting ready to get out on the highway. We're going down to Justin's to check out what he's got going on with the Nova. Hopefully you guys can hear me all right. And we died. I gotta do some cold weather tuning on this thing. It's, it's uh, not very happy with the cold. So, this is really kind of the first, let's take the, the Camaro for a drive. I've had it out, put a couple hundred miles on it now. Uh, since then, I've got the paddle shifters hooked up and working. I just did a video on that and posted it, showing kind of the, the route that we took for that. But we'll see how we do on this drive and impression so far i love this combination this transmission is so good i've been running it in program one which is like the street level like calmer tune i did play around with program two a little bit it holds the revs higher a little more aggressive shifts but as you can see the paddles work great just kicks down like a dream. Upshift might not be having a long enough trigger. Downshift works really well. And I can't remember. So downshift is set at 4.15 volts. Upshift's at 3.5. It's a little intermittent, and that probably just means I need to make some adjustments to my controller that I installed in the previous video. But, impressions so far. Okay, this combination with the Frankenstein heads, intake, the BTR cam, man, this thing makes more than enough power to get out of control. This thing will absolutely roast the tires off. I think it's probably around 600 horsepower or so based on all the mods that I'm running on this setup. And it feels like it. This is a pretty quick car. Any faster than this and it'd be dangerous. We're on the right on the threshold of dangerous here, but not quite dangerous. LS3 runs like a champ. Grand, this was a brand new LS3. I said it had like five miles on from whenever it was in the Monte Carlo. LS3 is running like champ, and the 8HP integration with the core ECU is just spot on and getting better. I've worked so much with the engineers over there to really get this stuff dialed in, and they've done a great job. say it just goes through the gears like butter absolutely no issues um, I just don't know what else to say this is the new combination if you were doing an LS swap and something you would be an absolute fool to do a 4L80 or 6L80 I mean even to the point where this thing drives so well with the paddles and shifts so well with the paddles. Like, I don't even know why you'd want a manual transmission. To boot, this thing will, has the ability to run a virtual clutch so you can drive it like you would a manual. 
And I like having it where, where, you know, whenever we use the paddles, it kicks over to manual. Then after a while, it goes back into drive. So it'll downshift and upshift automatically as needed. So there, we just went back to drive. If you wanted to go full manual, though, you could go over to program seven. Program seven is not going to shift unless you use the manual mode on the shifter or the paddle shifters. So. guys they think they're so fast so I'm absolutely being it this is the first time I've driven it with paddle shifters I'm having an absolute an absolute blast with these paddle shifters and that was part of the reason I wanted to get it over to Justin so he could take it for a spin with the paddle shifters and see how it does because he's going to put the paddle shifters into the uh, Nova. He's actually going to run an 8 HP in the Nova. He's got an 8 HP 70 to start. We know that that's probably short-lived, but they're so cheap. It's like grab everything that you need now, just put an 8 HP 70 in, and then whenever it craps the bed, we can start looking for an 8 HP 90 to, to throw in instead. Uh, and then everything will be tested out and, you know, easy enough at that point in time be proven. And honestly, the 70s, there's guys out there running a thousand horsepower on these without much of an issue. Where these really struggle is in high RPM applications. So if you're, as long as you're not revving this thing out to like 8,000 in seventh or eighth gear, like they do pretty well. So keep a highway gear in them. You know, don't go too aggressive on it. You've got eight gears. Whenever it's in lower gears, it'll it'll do what it needs to do. You know, th I think we've got 342s in here. I wish we actually had something closer to a 320 in here. Uh, I'm doing 65 right now, right at 2,000 RPMs in eighth gear, um, which is not bad. But I think this thing could do, you know, 1750 and just be glorious on the highway get a little better gas mileage stuff like that okay we're about to justin's and i will say we're running a little bit rich in the lower rpm so we probably need a look at the temperature compensation this has been by far the coolest day that this car has been out on the road and so if we pull up and stop at this stop sign you'll see what i'm talking about We'll let this thing get down to idle and it is idling around 10 and it'll die so you have to really give it the, the give it the gas to keep it from wanting to die so while we're adjusting we'll take a look at that and see what's going on Okay, we're up at Justin's checking out the progress on the old smoke monster. Ignore the paint where I took the decals off. I really jacked that up, didn't I? <laughs> Look at this absolute insanity. He has clearly lost his mind. As if 598 cubic inches aren't enough. We're throwing an A71 on here? Yeah, it's 71. With the lower section of a higher amp for fuel injection he's having to do a custom adapter plate now the one that you ordered was for an ls style high ram LS, yep. okay i just they didn't it, specify and i assume that all poly high ramps have the same bolt pattern that's what's wild to me and that's something i didn't know is that because right. i thought the tops were universal Probably the offset of the runners i bet with the big block could be Silly, but, but one of two that I know of that will be drive by wire. <laughs> what is that? Hit that again. That's so cool. 
Got the linkage set up. I'll make a cover for that so it's not so yeah. ugly. But. but still, it's good to see it, like what you're doing to adapt it. Here, to give you a better idea where you cut the throttle blade out. and Oh, you welded on a uh, extension on that yeah, so with the spawn. Yep, so I had adjustability for the linkage. That's going to be crazy. And then, of course, this is going to be on the Donnie Works adapter setup. As I said earlier, we're doing a 70 to begin with. We know that this thing will probably take a dump, but <laughs> these things are $500, $600 a pop. So before you spend three or four grand on a 90, we can get everything running. Locked up, figured out. Yeah, and this will be running a max ECU with the integrated uh, control. Now the difference between the Turbo Lambic and the Max ECU is the Turbo Lambic bypasses the internal TCU. The Max ECU actually you have to reflash it. You need to get that yeah. thing on the way. Remind me Monday and I'll yep. order one. So we can reflash it that allows the Max ECU to talk to the factory TCM and do all the controls that way. Which I think they've got that thing pretty much sorted where it'll do about everything that the Turbo Lambic will do also. Man, that's a nice kit. It is. This is... Everything, all the hardware was nice. It came with every adapter that you would need for any... Oh, nice. Yeah. Because I guess adapter. different years have different size yep. pilots. Yep. And this, is this the one that'll this do all GMs? LS, small block, and big block. And all in one kit. BOP, right? I'm not sure about that. I think this one will mount up to Buick Old Here. Pontiac. GM, LS, LT. Maybe this isn't the one that will mount up to the BOP. Because I know it seems legit posted that they had one that also fits BOP. But I think it's the Domi Works setup. So, hell yeah. Where's the Lamborghini at? You put it back in storage? Yeah, it's over storage, yep. I don't know. I don't blame you. This thing takes up the whole garage. It's the same length as the C10 was, believe it or not. You would think a truck would be longer, but right. they're like exactly the same. Oh yeah, you got this. Do uh, you remember where you got this? Heights. Heights. Heights race car. Race car made this All core Wally. support. Chrome only core support. I wish I would have put that in myself because look at the this thing always ran hot with the factory man like. Probably at least a third of the radiator was oh, covered. Yeah. At least a third. And that was like you had some cut out of this. Yeah, yes, I did. Core support. That's what like four hundred bucks for that thing. Yeah. Like if you're doing a Nova, it the, like it legit it holds up perfect. Yeah. Everything lined up the way it should. Literally, like down to the frame. And you can order it. There's an option if you want to keep the wheel wells. You can order it to mount to the factory wheel well. So we, then there's once you got to do a uh, standoff yeah, to the, the fender, but other than that, it's like 400 bucks. Yeah. No, I think it was under 400 bucks shipped. God, you can't beat that. That's my biggest regret is not putting that on there because this thing just ran warm. And, and it weighs like four pounds. Yeah. Compared to the yeah. factory stamped crap. Sweet. Uppers and lowers. Finally upgraded those. Oh yeah, and then you did uh, rack and pinion. Yes. And that is Unisteer. Unisteer, based off Mustang Two, I guess. Uh, I don't know if it's Mustang Two or Corvair. Oh. I would guess Mustang Two. Got to do new engine mounts. Going to. Probably try and move this thing forward just a titch up and, and up, forward. up and forward, because that's one of the complaints I always had was how close the oil pan was to the cross member. It's kind of hard to see down in there, but you get a general idea. So, yeah, get the new. So hopefully the this isolator will be a little more sturdy than the factory rubber mounts, because yeah, one of them melted out, the, right? Yeah, the passenger, passenger side. side. Yeah, that's pretty typical. Oh yeah, it's not too bad yet. <laughs> it's getting there though. You're able to get to the nut. 
the Cheval, there, I couldn't even get to the nut. It was it complete, all over. completely encased yeah. in, in rubber. Well, it was a nice trip out to see Justin and check out the progress on the Smoke Monster. The Camaro is just driving like a dream. I love this car. I'm going down the highway doing about 60. I got a little shimmy about 65 that kind of kicks in. I don't know. I need to recheck the pinion angle, but I got a couple other things to do. So I'm going to get this thing up on the lift here in the next day or two. And I want to run a new ground cable from the rear to the front. The existing ground's tied into the frame in the back. And, and uh, other than that, just check the drive line out, check everything out. I've got, as I said, an exhaust leak. I don't know if you guys would be able to hear it on here. I think it's at the driver's side V-band, so I'm going to dig into it. Just a couple small piddly things. Other than that, I would not hesitate to jump in this thing and drive it across the country. The only downside is the 10 gallon fuel cell. It just takes, I mean, well, while it just as we did go out and data log and fix the thing where it was running stupid rich below 2000 RPMs. And it's a lot better on target now. We're hitting one Lambda about all the time takes off from a stop way better everything's sorted out there so the gas mileage is probably a little bit better but for no more than the distance of that trip which is about an hour one way and a lot of that surface road so i'd say probably about 30 miles man we about have burned through an entire tank of gas now granted you guys didn't see when justin was driving it he was getting on it pretty good and and running through the revs and stuff like that. So that was not helping. We just did below a quarter tank of gas. I don't know how much below a quarter tank on this thing it will allow it to go. Like there's a good chance that there's still three or four gallons left whenever it's reading a quarter tank. I think this sensor reads better on the top half than it does on the bottom half. So. Uh, but I'm not trying to risk it either right now and getting stuck on the side of the highway. But that's kind of the update for now. Hopefully it's not too loud. You guys can hear me all right. And uh, yeah, I'm about back to the garage and we've got plenty left to do. You guys know the drill. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.